I've picked up quite a number of new skills over the last couple of years, uh, but few of them have been quite as rewarding as when I finally cracked the code and learned how to properly crimp DuPont connectors. Uh, I had picked up this kit uh, a while back. It has a ton of male and female pins. It's got connector housings all the way from one pin up to 10. Uh, it came with a nice uh, crimping tool. Um, but for the first week, I really struggled in getting these connectors made. And it wasn't so much the crimping, or at least that's what I thought, uh, but I always had a hard time taking the crimped connector and getting it into the housing. And it wasn't until I took a closer look at the pins and understood how the crimping worked that I was able to figure out what my problem was and then take steps to solve it. So let me show you what I learned. All right, let's take a closer look at one of these pins to see exactly what parts need to crimp and almost as importantly which parts you don't want to crimp. So starting at the base you have these two large wings here. These are intended to form the first crimp which crimps onto the insulation of the wire. In front of that the next pair of tabs are intended to crimp the bare wire and then in front of that you have these two tiny tabs that stick up these are important when you go to insert the pin into the housing. Those are the little tabs that stick up and help click it into place. Um, if we take a look at a crimper, the crimper that I have, uh, this is a ratcheting crimper. You should always get a ratcheting crimper. Uh, it's the best way to know that you've crimped sufficiently. If we're to close this up and take a look, this is the side where there would be the insulation crimp. And you can see the size of the, of the crimp there. On the other side is where the wire crimp is made. And you'll see that it's, it's smaller. And in fact, if you look at the jaws at the cross section, you'll see that halfway the size and the diameter of the crimp changes. And it's really important when you're crimping your your pin that you align that change in diameter with the two different crimp areas so that the insulation crimp is on one side and the wire crimp is on the other. And you want to make sure that those tiny little tabs are outside of the crimping area. You don't want to damage those at all. When I started making my crimps, because I'm right-handed, I would usually feed the wire and the connector in from this side. And I generally would line it up so that the root of the pin was along the front edge of the crimper. But what I didn't realize is that when I did that, I was crimping way too far up and I was damaging those little tabs that hold it into the connector. All right, so I've got a little piece of hookup wire here. I think it's 22 or 24 gauge. I've stripped a little bit more than a quarter of an inch off of the end of the wire. I want to have enough that I can tuck the bare wire under this little part in the front. And then I move the wire forward until the insulation is just forward of the insulation crimp. And that we know we can see that the bare wire is going to get the bare wire crimp. And once that's in a good spot. Go ahead and take the crimper, get this in the right spot, making sure to keep those front tabs clear of the crimper. There we go. You can see now that we've crimped the first crimp on the insulation, the second crimp on the bare wire, and those tiny little tabs are still sitting nice and proud. So with this, we should have no problem inserting this into one of the housings. So the housings, they've got the little, this little flap, and that's going to be facing up. So when you slide this in, clicked right into place. And there you go. 
So if you're planning any sort of a project that's going to involve Arduinos, microcontrollers, or servos, certainly something like an R2-D2, uh, you'll definitely benefit from learning and getting comfortable making your own DuPont connectors. Uh, it's a great skill to have, and it's really not that difficult once you figure it out. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you, uh, and uh, good luck with your projects, and I'll talk to you again soon.